What's up chess friends? So before I start today's game, a lot of you pointed out that in yesterday's game I had this uh, really simple mate in one on move 20 that I failed to notice. So I took the pawn with the knight on a7, but there was one move here, bishop takes, or bishop checks on a6 rather than it's check. The knight was uh, attacking the king's escape squares, then the bishop just comes in and takes the one last escape square. So a bit of a bummer to miss this, but um, it happens. So what can you do? Yeah, just learn to move on. Okay, let's see if we can do better today. Coffee fuel checkmates from Brazil. What a what a fun name. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> I can definitely relate. Just playing my favorite opening here as white. This is the London system. Uh, I like it because you don't really have to think too much in like the first eight moves or so. You just do the setup and then that's all you really have to do. The only one thing you have to like think about, it seems like, is kind of where the opponent puts their bishops and whether they lock those bishops behind the pawns or not. So, uh, yeah, like when the opponent puts... The dark skirt bishop on d6, for example, the big idea is to like fall back. It's like, do you take and let the queen out, or do you fall back and open up your h file, things like that? But otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, I like the opening because I feel like I can get a decent time advantage, at least in the beginning. There's not too much time wasted. Thinking, thinking, thinking. The one thing that I have run into on occasion uh, with the London system is like if the opponent goes for a really early f5 and then puts their knight out onto b4, uh, it sort of creates this really easy fork for the knight and then the only piece that can defend it is the queen, um, but that's being protected by like the pawn on, or excuse me, the bishop on f5. Um, so that is like one of the sneaky plays that I've seen that um, can give me a hard time. Um, I think the trick to that is if you suspect the opponent looking for that fork, like an early c3 to block that uh, knight from coming onto b4 seems to be like the play. Um, this is one of those moves that I also don't quite know the best response. I don't know if this in this exact position the best idea is to like push h3 or go uh, bishop e2. Um, because the bishop's kind of supposed to develop to e3 naturally. But um, I'm going to just opt to create the escape square for the king here early, just in case he goes for like a really early h5, knight h5 or something like that. And then I can just run my bishop back. Okay, cool. So he still wants to maintain the pin here. I think in that case, I'm just going to go e2. And probably look to castle next or get the knight out to d2. So far, so good. I don't really want to trade off the light square bishop yet because it seems like one of the big ideas with the London is to control this diagonal with the light square bishop. So 
And that's why I'm a little, a little slow to make this trade here. I imagine he's going to try to push like G5 next, but it's no, no worries though. It can always just fall back. Mm, can either go knight d2 or castle. I think I'm just going to play a developing move. Yeah, okay, so that was expected. He's probably going to try to kick the knight next. I can either try to go e5. I don't normally go e5. But boom, trades. Kicks the knight. Mm. Mm. I think I'm just going to play it safe. If I take with the H pawn, I probably won't castle at this point. I think I can move my knight to e5 safely at this point too. This may be like a queenside castle game as well. I don't think he's going to be castling kingside with these pawns here like that. Okay, interesting. Hmm. Interesting move. Hmm. Let me just put off castling for a little bit. Maybe C3 is the next play. I think C4 is a fine move at this point. Think about e5. e5 takes. Where's his knight forced to go? His knight's basically forced to go back to d7. But let me think. Could always just try to like pin the knight here too. The only thing he has to protect with is the queen. I'm just going to play the knight move. I don't know. It seems right. I just want to kick his knight away. Yeah, I wonder what's better if he takes with the knight. Taking with the bishop and forcing his knight back, or taking with the pawn. I know it kind of messes up the pawn structure, but I actually think it's better to take with the bishop then. He'll probably be motivated to pop his knight, and then that would expose his rook. Something to consider. Water break. One of my advantages here is that he's slightly behind on development. He hasn't touched his dark square bishop. It's still on its starting square, so it's a bit weak. Hmm. 
Interesting move. I wonder what's better, taking the light square bishop or taking the knight at this point? Or maybe I just leave it. Hmm. Stacking the pawns is interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder what's better here. I'm not really sure. Maybe I just play another developing move. C3. C4 is always an option here, too. Either b5, bishop b5, pawn c3, castle. Definitely have options. I want to pick sort of the best tempo move here. Hmm. I think if I take his light square bishop, he's going to be able to like hurl a lot of these pawns at the king side. I don't know if that's really the best thing. I could also just try to pin his knight and then capture his knight that way as well. And then I think I will be winning a rook if I can get the fork with the bishop. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think if he pushes, I'll be forced to take with the uh, bishop here on c6. I mean, he obviously can't guard this with a light square bishop. So there's that. Hmm. Interesting. see so i might be forced to just take this and try to win the pawn hmm. maybe i go for this at this point i think am i just winning here okay so i can trade 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 but i think he's gonna be winning that way right yeah so let's think about this I think taking the bishop here is the play. Hmm. I'm going to go for it. And I can take the knight and it'll mess up his pawns. I'd rather trade this knight off at this point. This is okay. Yeah, I wonder if it's going to be a good idea to castle kingside now. Not really sure. He has one really good move. <laughs> I think he should go for it. Hmm. I wonder if I just take or fall back here. I think if I take, I can save my my knight, right? Isn't that kind of the big idea? Yeah, I think I just want to save my knight. Yeah, seems reasonable. I like this square. I think this is considered an outpost because it can't be kicked by a pawn at this point.
Yeah, okay. Now I think it'd be sort of a fair time to castle. Put my queen up. Add some pressure here. Yeah, I could look for pressure over here on g6. I think that's going to force him to move his king over to uh, f8. And if he moves over, I can go knight e6 with the fork and hopefully win the queen. I think that's okay. I don't know how he's going to block that. I think he has to go like king f7 to block that. I think that's his only move. So I'm basically up a piece at this point. Ah, he found it. Well, I can still take the pawn, so it seems pretty good. So just plain do have this fork as well. I go for the fork or take the pawn. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, I actually have a really nasty fork next move. Actually, this is just maiden 2 if I can get my knight out. Uh, I think he's going to be forced to play like rook f6 or something. Yeah, that will be one nasty fork. Yeah, his bishop is actually pinned too. Something to keep in mind. Yeah, I guess I could play like a... What is it? Bishop e5 at this point and look for mate as well. Maybe that's the more active move. Hmm. It's all going to depend on his next move. I really like this spot for the knight, c5. I've used the term outpost incorrectly <laughs> in the past, but I think this is the correct, uh, or this is a, technically considered a knight outpost since the pawns can't um, attack this knight. I think bishop e5 is probably the better play because we're going to be doing the whole putting pressure on the pin piece thing. I think he needs to move his rook to f7. Yeah, or that too. That seems like a fine move. Too bad I don't have check. Probably have to... Probably have to go here, huh? H5. Either H5 or like D3. I wonder what's better. 
I like d3 because it's much more of a central move. This just seems like a bad spot for a queen to be, but it is like blocking a nice diagonal here. But um, it's fine. I'm not going to get greedy. I think he's going to go like queen of fate next. I think he's going to look for queen f8, so he can potentially look, look for the battery on f2. That's my guess. If he goes for that, I'll castle. Maybe I should have played knight to e6 there. Maybe, yeah. So that's kind of what I figured. Mm, it's probably castling is the best bet here. Uh, let's think here. If I castle, yeah, I'm going to have two defenders here. I also do have just like another sick fork on the next move. But um, this seems fine. Yeah, I was expecting f8. Should be winning a rook here, either way. Pawn structure is looking very nice. Okay, he saw that. I don't want to get the bishop in. I do have a free piece back here. I wonder if I snipe it. I wonder if I should go for the snipe. Um, or no, that's not free. The rook's protecting that. Probably time to like move the rooks as well. Hmm. I'll just double these up. Not double them up, but you know what I mean. Attack his rook. Just want to get the bishop out of the way. I think it's A-OK -okay to just trade off here. I'll take, he'll probably take with the queen. Yeah, that's fine. I hope he takes with the queen and not the king. I want to take this pawn here. Ah, he didn't do it. Now uh, let's see, so I can attack. Could I honestly just start throwing pawns at him? I need to remember that his queen and his uh, rook are 
are doubled up here. Looking for the battery. Do I take this? That's the question. I kind of want to do take it so I can hop my knight. Uh, that'll be check, and then I should just be winning the rook. Think boom, boom, boom. That's protected. I should just win the rook. Yeah, I think that's okay. My guess is he's trying to probably find some way to use his pawns to break this open and like look for some pins. Kind of a common theme from the last two days. <laughs> okay, that's good. That was good. So now I have check and I should just be winning the rook. I'm happy to trade the knight off here. That's fine. Yeah, moving the rook to e1 was was the play for sure. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's anything else kind of interesting here that we can do besides maybe winning the rook. I don't think there is. Yeah, this probably has to be done. Let me have check next. Yeah. Cool. GG. Well, I feel redeemed from yesterday's game. Wow, 90.6. That may be the highest I've ever gotten. I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but... Uh... Yeah, usually I have at least a few mistakes and misses and a handful of accuracies. So this is pretty different for me. Pretty different. I played like 1550. It might be one of the highest I've seen. And he played like 1350, so he played pretty well too. I mean, he had pretty good accuracy too, almost 80%. Um, okay, cool. Some of you um guys have mentioned that I kind of skipped through the analysis a little bit too fast. Like yesterday, I missed the part of the analysis where... Um, I had Maiden 1. Um, so I'm going to try to do a little bit more of a thorough analysis. But these are all good moves so far. Okay, so he should have taken. Hmm. Yeah, I agree he should have taken too. I think in the London system, the big idea is that if the knight gets onto e5, it's very strong. So it's probably better to just prevent that. Just a guess. Yeah, there's that c4 idea. Um, someone can tell me if I'm wrong, but in the London system, if the opponent can't protect sort of these four squares with a light square bishop, it's okay to push up c4. Um, that's what I've noticed, at least. But I was trying to just keep a um, defender on the knight that's not the queen. Um, just so this knight wouldn't really be like pinned or whatever. Pushing the pawn up, that's a little bit too adventurous for me. Falling back, yep. Moving the same piece twice in the opening is good for development. Yeah, he was moving his uh, bishop around a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, he probably should have traded off there. Looks like I had the right idea eventually.
Nice. This was probably the move, I feel like, that just gave me a big advantage. Well, besides winning the piece. But yeah, going for check and then getting the knight out of the way was definitely the play that won a piece. That might have been somewhat accidental, but... Oh, moving back to d3 was the play. Oh, the ac engine recommends h5, actually. So this was the best move, huh? Okay. Yeah, my idea with e1 is that I just wanted to break open the e-file because there was sort of a lot of um, attacked squares from my side on the e-file. This was just wanting to trade pieces off. That was the idea, just attacking the rook. And then, yes, being able to spot the fork there was good. And then opponent resigns. Honestly, I think he should have kept playing, in my opinion. I know he was down 10 points of material, but like, you know, anything can happen. And like you guys saw in yesterday's game that even with a 10 point advantage, and really this would have just been a seven point advantage. Um, all you have to do is just find one or two really good moves and you can still uh, find a win. So yeah, it only takes one bad mistake or two bad mistakes from your opponent to come back. So I don't know. I think I think he should have kept playing. Um, just my opinion though. But uh, either way, uh, good game, Coffee Fueled Checkmates. GG. I virtually shake my hand to you. And uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching and see you in tomorrow's game.